Hello everyone, my name is Nick and in this video I'm going to talk about top 5 reasons why people fail CCIE lab exam. First of all, just as quick introduction, I have two CCIEs in routing and switching and data center. Also I have experience failing my lab attempt. Also I took all my attempts in three different locations, so you should be pretty confident that I know what I'm talking about. And as a quick disclaimer, in this video I won't be talking about what CCIE is, how important it is for your career, how difficult it is to achieve. In this video I'm going to talk about specific reasons why you may fail your lab examination. So with that being said, let's move forward. And before we go to our reasons, I would like to mention a couple of mistakes which you can make and fail your lab exam. It may sound pretty obvious, but I need to mention it. In order to even make your attempt, you should arrive to right place and on time. And this could be pretty tricky if you travel from different city or even different country and you are not that familiar with that uh, lab location hometown. So you should keep in mind things like jet lag, traffic, you should prepare a route from your hotel or other location to lab location. Also you should remember that lab starts quite early. So just uh, be 100% sure that you know how to get uh, from your place to lab location on time. Also, uh, you should know that there is a policy. So technically, you can be late, but if you're late for two hours or more, you won't be allowed to even start your attempt. Also, one more minor thing, but still, it could be quite important. Don't violate exam rules. If you do violate them, you will obviously your attempt will obviously cancelled. Probably you will be banned from further attempts, and if you have CCIE, uh, that CCIE status will be revoked. So don't do that. Uh, very very stupid mistakes. So now we are ready to move forward and discuss proper reasons why most people fail CCIE lab exam. So our first reason here is related to health and body issues. Lab exam lasts for 8 hours and also you will have 15, maybe 30, maybe 40 minutes lunch break. So you will be there at least for 8 hours, probably 9 hours including lunch and for that period of time you will be uh, working really really hard. You will be configuring complex things, you will be working with very big topology. Uh, you will be troubleshooting things and uh, in order to pass that exam I would say your mind and your body should be in perfect state of readiness. And in order to achieve that state I suggest I recommend you to have a good proper sleep. Again, uh, remember what I've just mentioned. Jet lag, uh, that lab starts early, that you need to travel from your hotel to lab location, probably you would want to have a breakfast, so take into account all those things and have a proper sleep. Next tip I would like to mention here is related to lunch. I know people who ate uh, too much at lunch and they actually felt sleepy. So be aware, lunch is located in the middle of your lab exam. So you start your lab, in the middle you go and have your lunch, then you go back and continue configuring, troubleshooting, etc, etc, etc. So obviously it, won't, it wouldn't be a good idea to feel sleepy when you come back from your lunch and you also need, uh, and at that point you still need to configure basically half of your lab. And last thing I would like to mention here is related to uh, lab room temperature. Tem uh, temperature, yeah. Because it could be quite cold. So my recommendation here is to uh, take uh, proper clothes with you so you can uh, put something on if it's too cold or you could uh, take something off if it's uh, too hot. So this is basically things which are related to body and health and let's move forward. And next reason I would like to talk about is related to relying on Procto for too much. And let me clarify what I mean by that. First of all, I need to mention that uh, proctors, they don't have that goal to ruin your lab exam. Proctors are there to help you, but not to do things on your behalf. Listen again and please listen carefully, because from my standpoint it is very, very important. Proctors are there to help you, but not to do things on your behalf. Uh, to pass the CIE lab exam, you should be able to make your own and independent decisions. So, what do I mean by help? First of all, if there is something out of your control, proctors should, should help with it. 
If there is something out of scope for your track, proctors also should help with it. So let me give you an example. So if you are, uh, if you are making an attempt to pass SP or collaboration track and there is something wrong with firewall, I don't know why you, sh why you should have firewall in that lab, but let's say you have uh, SA firewall or fire firepower firewall, and and you are and you are one hundred percent sure that it somehow affects your lab uh, your lab, and uh, you don't know how to fix it because well you don't uh, it's not security track it's collaboration or service provider in that case uh, Proctor should help you. And again, uh, one more example is related to problems with power. So, for example, if uh, power is broken for some device, for some router or some switch in your lab exam, and uh, you basically cannot access it at all, obviously Proctor should help in this situation as well. But on the other hand, if you messed up AAA configuration and you messed up it completely, so you don't have access over Telnet, SSH, console, that's completely your fault. You should understand it. You should uh, you should understand that you messed up your and you messed up that part, and you probably messed up your lab. And proctors, they in that case, they uh, probably won't help you. Also. I already mentioned that uh, CCIE lab exam, it tests uh, your ability to make independent decisions. So if you want to clarify some task, if you want to clarify some question, you can ask uh, Proctor to help you with it. But uh, I suggest, uh, I suggest uh, you not to rely on his answer for 100%. So again, that's your decision, that's your lab, you should uh, take care of it. And also, I gave you a couple of examples, but they were kind of extremes. Also, there are many things in between, but again, uh, remember, uh, that's your lab, that's your decision, and if you ask Proctor for something, you should justify, you should prove your point. So, if there's something wrong with power, you should clearly state it. So, Mr. or Miss, there is something wrong with uh, power with, with that device. I can access it at all. I can access console. I can access SSH, Telnet. Uh, I didn't do anything with uh, AAA or RBAC, RBAC uh, configuration. So that's clearly something wrong with power. So you should be very clear. You should prove your point. In that case, Proctor will help you. And again, uh, be aware, they are not there to fail your lab. They don't, they don't have that goal in mind. They are, there, uh, they are there to help you, but again, make your own decisions. This is your lab, and Cisco uh, tests you, uh, how you how you can make your own decisions, your own independent decisions. So, let's move forward. And next thing I would like to talk about is related to prioritization and time management. As I've already said, CCIE lab exam is uh, quite uh, complex, or very complex, to be honest, and topology is very big. When you start your examination, you are presented with a question paper which has all the tasks Cisco wants you to accomplish in your lab. And the order you are presented in that question paper, in most cases, it is not the same order you should use for actual configuration. Let me explain it. So you may have a task in section 1 to configure IPsec tunnel, but things related to physical connectivity between IPsec nodes or routing adjacency between those nodes are somewhere in section 3, maybe section 4. So in my opinion, it makes no sense to configure IPsec and, troublesh and try to troubleshoot it when you don't have uh, IP reachability and it makes no sense to troubleshoot OSPF adjacency, adjacency if you don't have physical connectivity, if you don't have proper VLANs or if your physical link between routers, I don't know, is in down state. So my suggestion here is use common, uh, common sense. So if you need to configure IPsec, First of all, ensure that there is a physical link in proper state, there is a routing exchange if you need routing exchange, there is IP reachability, and finally you should start configuring IPsec or troubleshooting IPsec. And actually this approach applies to basically every technology I know. So for example, it makes no sense to configure or troubleshoot boot from iSCSI if your UCS chassis is not, uh, is not discovered yet. So again, uh, use common sense uh, and do things in proper order. So in order to avoid mistakes here, you should uh, take a look at your question paper, read it from A to Z, 
read all tasks and come up with uh, with, a, with an action plan how you would tackle uh, how you would tackle this exam as a whole not uh, per section not per task but as a whole if we fail to do so you may find yourself in a very difficult situation so for example let's say you configured something in section one uh, and in three hours maybe in four hours and five hours you find out that in section five there is a task which has interdependency with task from section one and you need to reconfigure something uh, in section one but you already configured it maybe you troubleshoot something maybe you did proper verification for all VLANs all IP addresses that all this stuff is correct and now you need to reconfigure it from from scratch this is obviously not a good situation so again read through the whole uh, question paper, identify action plan, identify interdependencies between different sections, between tasks in different sections, etc, etc, etc. So come up with a reasonable uh, action plan, with a reasonable uh, order of operation. And also there is one more thing here which is related to time management. So you should be aware of all the things in your lab which may take some time. So for example, uh, if you need to do a reboot of your router, of, uh, of your switch, which obviously takes, I don't know, three, five, maybe seven minutes, you should be aware of that. Or, for example, there are some things which uh, take time by design. For example, a blade or rack server boot uh, process. So if you need to uh, reboot your router, your switch, if you need to boot blade, and uh, you started that process, you initiated, you shouldn't be just sitting and staring at your CLI and wait until it boots. While it is booting or rebooting, you should be doing other tasks in order to not uh, spend your time, again, just uh, for staring at your screen. So be aware of it. Again, lab is quite big. You have lots of complex tasks. You don't have that luxury to spend some time just staring at your screen. So that's all for that reason. Again, let's move forward. So we have only two more reasons to discuss here and let's start with uh, low attention to details. Lots of people fail a lab exam because they didn't pay enough attention to detail. And let me clarify what I mean by that. First of all, if you have any restrictions in your uh, question paper, you should honor it. For example, if you are asked, if you are asked not to configure static routes, do not configure static routes. If you are asked to configure specific multicast mode, configure that specific multicast mode, not other one. Also, if there are, if you are given some specific IDs or names for objects uh, or policies, use them exactly the same way they are presented to you again in a question paper. So if you are asked to configure VLAN 10, configure VLAN 10, not VLAN 100, not VLAN 1000, not VLAN 110, just VLAN 10, the same way as it stated. If there is a name for that VLAN in question paper, for example, VLAN PROT and PROT is, is in capitals, configure it the same way, PROT in capitals, not PROT in lowercase, or not uh, some different name, and uh, not leave that VLAN without name at all. So if that VLAN has uh, some name, you should configure it. And also, uh, in, the, in your lab, you may face uh, traps or tricks. Unfortunately, here I can share with you examples because obviously it will violate exam rules, but the general recommendation here would be to carefully read the question paper and pay attention to it. Inside uh, question statements there could be traps, but also there could be tips. So it could be also useful for you. So again, read it very carefully. And also you should plan some time to check to verify your lab when you are finished. So when you finished all troubleshooting, all configuration, you should have some, uh, some time to check that uh, your solution is compliant with restrictions, that you used uh, proper names, proper IDs, etc, etc. Again, in my opinion, uh, as I told you at the beginning, I failed one of my attempts and I think that I failed it because of uh, actually low attention to details and uh, traps inside the lab. So just uh, pay proper attention. And last reason I want to discuss today is related to lack of fundamental knowledge. So all issues we've already discussed, they are fixable and you can fix them uh, quite easy and quite fast. But if you don't have fundamental knowledge, unfortunately or fortunately, 
uh, this issue you can't fix it fast or easy. So if you don't know technology, chances of passing lab exam are very, very slim. But anyways, if you manage to pass your lab exam somehow, but you still, uh, for some reason, don't know fundamental knowledge for the track, uh, again, that's not a good situation. So in order to get uh, a CCIE level job, you will still be interviewed. And just imagine what happens uh, in that case, if you don't know uh, technology, for which you have uh, expert level certification. So just keep in mind. Obviously, you should know that stuff which you are going to configure in your lab exam. There is no other way. So with that being said, that's pretty much it. To summarize, uh, I, would, uh, I would like to mention that, first of all, don't do stupid mistakes. Know your location, know how to get there. Be aware that lab starts early, etc., etc., etc. Next, be aware of health and body related issues. So have a proper sleep, don't eat too much, don't feel sleepy, be in a good, in a good shape, in a good state, both in terms of your body and your brain. Next, don't rely on Proctor for, don't rely on Proctor too much. Again, CCIE is about your own independent decisions. That's what Cisco uh, tests you for. Next, uh, pay attention to time management and prioritization. Again, come up with a proper plan, come up with a proper order and uh, read the whole uh, question paper at the very beginning and again, uh, do stuff uh, in order which makes sense. Next, pay attention to details. So be aware of restrictions, be aware of proper uh, IDs or proper names for objects or policies. And finally, Obviously, uh, you should have uh, proper fundamental knowledge for the technology you are trying to pass the CCIE, uh, CCIE lab exam for. So with that being said, I wish you good luck. I know that uh, this exam is very tough. I tried it uh, three times, passed only two. So again, good luck, have fun and get your CCIE. See you.